Hey everyone, welcome to the Different Fins channel. If you watch my videos, you know that I'll fish for anything that swims. I'm a hardcore multi-species guy, but obviously some fish get more attention than others. In this case, bass. Bass are the most popular sport fish in North America. Largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and there is a larger market for tackle, gear, lures for bass than any other species. A few years ago, I stumbled upon a new technique that was so effective for bass and so much fun that nine out of 10 times I go targeting bass, it's the only way I fish for them. If you've been following my channel, you already know what I'm gonna say. That is how I catch my bass. I know what you're thinking, fly fishing. Well, that's just for catching tiny little trout in a mountain stream, right? Well, it is, but you can adapt fly fishing to pretty much any species. Since I discovered this, it's all I can use. Like, I have a hard time going to anything else for bass. So what I'm going to do is get out in the kayak, take you along with me, and as I catch fish, because I know I'm going to catch fish, that's how effective it is, I'll uh, talk about the rod I have, what you need, because if you're not going to try this, you're missing out. All right, let's go get some bass. Got him. Nice. So exciting seeing the top water hit. This is what I can't get enough of. Clear water, top water, just seeing that fish come up and engulf it. What a great feeling. After I get this fish in and let it go, I'll talk about the rod I'm using. In the net, just like that. There's my fly. There's the fish. Although fly rods can cost hundreds of dollars, I do have some like that. This rod here is actually made by Berkeley. Berkeley Enforcer, I bought this about a decade and a half ago when I was in college, so obviously it's kind of a budget rod. Seven weight, eight and a half foot, and adequate for pretty much any kind of bass you're gonna catch. You can spend the hundreds of dollars and get the fancy rod, but you can get started with a setup like this for under 150 bucks. This reel is a max catch. I got it off Amazon. Cheap line you could pick up at any box store that sells fishing gear. And the flies, well, let's catch another fish and then we'll talk about the flies. Calm conditions and clear water. Doesn't get much better than this. Perfect conditions for fly fishing. Oh. Just like that. I was saying cut scene. <laughs> Looking away, there's the bass. Awesome, just awesome. This little guy's taking me for a ride. The water's so clear, I can see the bass's shadow on the bottom.
just couldn't resist the fly, could you? Another one in the net. Woo. Check it out. That's the fly right there. This particular fly I'm using is called the Chernobyl Ant. It's a size six. It's a good size for bass, something they could really see and they'll want to eat. But any foam terrestrial, these hoppers, that's the ticket. It just looks like any kind of insect that's fallen to the surface, a moth, butterfly, dragonfly, etc. They'll eat it. Another great pro for fly fishing is the affordability of the flies. Most flies are 50 cents, a dollar, a couple dollars for the larger ones. You could build up quite a collection in no time without breaking the bank. Fly fishing with dry flies for bass is like a combination of the relaxation of bait fishing with the excitement of top water because you get to see the follows see the strikes that's the best part oh that was cool oh man oh. see what I mean I am so relaxed right now and you go from zero to adrenaline rush just like that. Wow. Honestly, the first time I picked up a fly rod and was gonna try for bass, I was reluctant. I didn't think it would work myself. And the first time I tried it, I caught like a dozen bass in a matter of a couple hours. So I was convinced changed my attitude and been blessed with uh, some awesome fishing ever since. The show. Woo. Yeah, boy. Oh yeah. Relaxing adrenaline. <laughs> There's a few more big boys down there too. Not sure if you could see them. I see about half a dozen right there. Just awesome. Got him. Woo! Yes, sir. I can still see the bass right there. Nice uh, parasite ridden smallmouth. They're like that in these lakes. I feel bad for them. Another part of fly fishing that's very complicating to uh, beginners is the leader. 
you read all this stuff about tapered leaders and sizes. Um, the sizes of leaders, it's basically the larger the number, the lighter the line is. For bass, I wouldn't go any less than 2x. Bass are the most populous fish in this lake, but the second most abundant species is northern pike. So I avoid the uh, mono tapered leaders altogether, and I tied on about six feet of 17 pound fluoro, just standard fluorocarbon line, and it casts nice, it gets the job done, and if a pike decides to grab it, chances are I'll get my fly back. Of course with fly fishing you're gonna have to learn a couple knots that right there is a nail knot connecting my seven weight fly line floating to my floral but that's it nice and clean oh Sean <laughs> of course I wasn't paying attention I was looking around for a bass <laughs> and the one I didn't see grabbed it. Woo. Like this is so much fun. Here I am describing how much fun it is but and you can see <laughs> I'm having a good time but you really have to try it for yourself. Come to Papa. Gotcha. Another beauty bass on the fly. Another cool thing about using the foam terrestrials is they never get saturated Traditional dry flies over time do absorb water and begin to sink. So you have to apply a floatant, which is a water repellent. You have to do false cast to dry it out, but the foam just keeps on going. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, just having a good time here. Honestly, this is probably the last time I'm gonna target bass this year. Might catch a few more, but this is the last time I'm gonna actually try to catch bass it's been a good day got a few nice ones some top water action relaxing some beautiful weather doesn't get much better than that Oh, that was awesome. Woo! So cool. While I was fighting the last fish, I did mention that it's probably the last time I'm going to target bass this year. I forgot to mention, it is the end of summer. Summer is practically over and there are no insects to speak of so that really shows you how effective fly fishing is for bass. Even when there isn't a hatch, they're eating uh, 
eating insect imitations. Aren't you? So you can imagine how good the fishing action is in the middle of summer when the dragonflies and everything else are uh, settling on the water. I'm more or less done with the fly fishing talk. Obviously you can see it works. Caught lots of nice fish today, but it's just too nice to go home yet. I'm gonna keep fishing. If I catch something extra nice, I'll add it to the video, but only time will tell. Whoa, that woke me up. <laughs> oh man, I was half asleep there. <laughs> Just cruising back to the landing. Oh, the adrenaline. See, fly fishing, you go from nothing relaxing to what? Oh, and it got off. Wow. See what I mean? Just like that. That was cool. I saw the wake coming. Last minute fish. That's the landing right there. Good fight. Good way to end the day right here. Oh yeah. Right at the landing. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Nice fish. Well, there you have it, folks. Fly fishing. It's relaxing, but with adrenaline rush. It's easy, but obviously effective. Caught lots of nice fish today. So, give it a go. I'm filming this at the end of summer, but I'm going to upload it in December. About a month out from the holidays. Who knows? A new fly fishing setup might be a good gift idea. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Tight lines, everyone. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> oh, boy.
Look at that monster.